Hi there, I'm Michelle Cashmore and in today's video I'll be showing you how I created my latest painting of two horses using coloured pencils and airbrush. I start off first of all with the airbrushing. I've masked off the horses here using frisket film and masking fluid around the edges. This keeps the paper nice and clean for the coloured pencil later on. I start out by putting down a base layer of green and just building up the intensity and colour from there as the inks are quite translucent. Once the base layer is on, I start adding some variation just to create that kind of blotchy, blurry background to make it look like out of focus trees. So first of all I'm putting down darker layers. As I mentioned before, most of the inks are quite translucent. However, the Liquitex white ink is very opaque. This makes it ideal to use as a base for other lighter colours to go over. So here I'm now adding lighter greens and yellows on top of the white. I also don't want everything to be the exact same shade of green. I want to add some variation in there, so different shades of yellows and browns just to make it look more natural. And so I just keep building up the layers and colours in the background until I'm happy with the way it looks. Once the ink's completely dried, I carefully remove the frisket and the masking fluid from the paper and then it's ready to move on to the coloured pencil work. I often like to start with the eyes with subject where possible as they usually have quite dark sections on them compared to the rest of the drawing so it's a useful marker for how dark my drawing needs to go. When working with coloured pencil I always use multiple light layers and just build up the colour gradually using a light hand. Once I have several layers on the paper I then use odourless mineral spirits to blend out the colour. Once that's completely dried then I can go back over it with more layers until I get the look that I want. Coloured pencil is an extremely slow medium. It's a matter of patience and just building up those layers, building up that colour until you get the look that you're going for. In addition to making sure I get my lights and darks where they need to go, I'm also looking out for subtle variations in colour on the horse's face. So you can see here that uh, this horse isn't just one shade of brown. He's actually a bit more reddish around his eyes and a bit more greyish down towards his nose. I quite often go back and revisit areas that it looks like I've completed. This is because as I complete the areas around it, I can see adjustments that I need to go back and make. Some people like to work in a single layer over a whole drawing at a time and other people like to work in sections. You just have to experiment to find the best way of working for you. Personally, I like to work in sections, partially because it's easier to record, but also partially just because I like to mostly complete an area before moving on. One thing to be careful of with colour pencil is that it's very tricky to lighten up an area after it's been made too dark, so always start out light and gradually build up to the darkness that you require. I should mention that I'm using quite a wide variety of colour pencils while working on this piece. I'm mostly using Faber-Castell Polychromos and Caran d'Ache Luminance. I'm also using some Caran d'Ache Pablo pencils, some Derwent drawing pencils, and also later on I add in a couple of Pro Colour pencils, as they became available to buy in the shops as I was working on this piece. They all work very well together and combine perfectly well, so you can mix your coloured pencils as you like. For animals with longer fur, I'm generally careful to make sure the length and direction of my pencil strokes are correct to represent the fur accurately. Because these horses for the most part have very short hair, they look quite smooth. I'm mostly working in small ovals to keep a smooth look, with the longer sides of the ovals matching the hair direction. This helps make them look short coated. When using odorless mineral spirits to blend, you do have to remember to let the paper dry thoroughly after applying it before using pencils on it again. In this video it looks like I'm applying pencil again straight away after using the brush, but really I'm letting it dry for a while before I go on to add new layers. For trickier areas like the muzzle, I will try and map out important features before I go on and apply the first layers of colour. So here you can see me marking out the wrinkles and bumps on his chin before I actually apply layers over the top. This helps me keep my place. So here I'm just gradually building up the layers, eventually making the values as dark as they need to be and the colours as intense as they need to be. All the time I'm looking back to my reference photo and paying close attention to how dark areas actually are. The colour picker uh, tool on most paint apps is really useful for this because you can see how actually dark or white something is and what the actual colour of it is. So you can see here again I'm mapping in the structure of the neck muscles here just so I can keep my place and see what needs to be dark and what areas need to be lighter. The sheet of paper you see under my hand is called glassine. 
I really like to use it as a rest for my hand to stop me transferring any oils or dirt onto the paper. It's great to use for both graphite and coloured pencil work because nothing sticks to it. So even though this horse is dark brown overall, I'm actually using a lot of warm greys in the neck muscle. This is why it's important to use a colour picker to check the actual colours of your subject as I mentioned earlier, as the colours are not always what we expect them to be. When drawing longer hair such as the mane, it's important to make sure that your pencil strokes follow the direction of the hair. Also be careful to note that um, not all hairs will go in the exact same direction. They're organic, they move, there's some variation in the way that they lay. Um, it's also useful to look at the mane in terms of groupings or clumps of hair rather than individual ones. So you're looking for the shadows in between each group of hair and drawing those first rather than trying to add in each individual hair because that will just make it look stringy, straw-like and not actually like real hair. As I move down the neck, you can see the difference between the areas that I'm currently working on versus the areas that are completed. The areas that just have a few layers on, they look pale, they look unfinished and low contrast, whereas the completed areas look much richer in comparison. So it's a good way to see what difference a few more layers of colour pencil can make to the overall look of the finished piece. The ripples in the neck muscles here were one area where I had to pay close attention to the reference photo to make sure that I drew them accurately and also to make sure that I didn't make them too high contrast. If they stood out too much then they would look strange and unrealistic whereas if they stood out too little then I wouldn't get the level of detail and realism that I was going for. For adding the highlights on his fur I really like the Solway Blue pencil by Derwent Drawing for this. It's a nice sky blue colour and it was just opaque enough to add the hint of blue to the, the highlights which made it look perfect for the sky reflecting off his dark fur. Apologies, the camera angle is not very good here so it's difficult to see what I'm doing but I'm mostly just following the exact same process for the shoulder as I did for the rest of his body. So I'm now moving on to the second horse and I'm just following the exact same process. One of the other reasons that I like to start with the eyes is that the eyes are the soul of the piece. It's what people focus on first, so I like to get that right before I move on to anywhere else. So this horse is chestnut, so I'm using a lot of earthy oranges, reds, browns and ochre colours. For the shadows, I'm even throwing in a few purplish colours there, as those really make the shadows pop. You can see how messy the area around his eye looks to start off with, but as I build up layers and as I refine the areas around it, it will all start to come together. So you may have noticed me use a paintbrush there to apply what looks like white paint to create the wispy hairs on his forelock. This is actually a mixture of brush and pencils, titanium white powder and touch up texture fixative, both of which are intended for coloured pencils. I'll put a link in the video description to another video from Lacquer Fine Art that shows you how to make this mixture up and how to use it. I find it really useful for adding in little details like whiskers and wispy hair, and even for fixing mistakes that I've made, as it's quite opaque. You do have to be careful to let it dry for as long as possible before going over it with any pencil though. If you go over it too quickly then it does have a tendency to flake off, and I actually had a problem with this when fixing a mistake on the forelock. It's dry to the touch after about 15 minutes, but in my experience waiting at least a couple of hours before trying to go over it with coloured pencil makes a big difference. So again, just building up the colour and lots of light layers and making sure that my ovals follow the general direction of the fur. His fur actually gets longer towards the bottom of his chin, so I lengthen my brush stroke slightly just to give that impression of the hair lengthening. Another thing you might see me use as we go through this video is a small piece of tape over the surface of the drawing. What I'm actually doing here is I'm using Scotch Magic Tape to lift off areas of colour. It's really useful for fixing mistakes, as by placing it lightly over the top of your drawing and then using a pencil to push down on the area that you want to lift, it will lift up areas of colour. As you're controlling with the pencil what areas you're lifting, it can be quite accurate and used to lift little tiny areas. So as I move down his nose, I'm still paying close attention to my reference photo to make sure I get all the shadows and highlights in the right place. It's important to get these right, as they're caused by the bone structure veins and muscles on his face, and they'll give my drawing the form and shape it needs. Always make sure you're drawing what you actually see and not what you think you see. 
For tricky areas, I spend a lot of time just studying my reference before I actually make any new marks. Again, I'm just gradually deepening those shadows, getting them as dark as they need to be. As I work through my drawing, I often stop to compare it more closely to my reference photo. This is quite good for showing up what areas are not dark enough, what areas need to be adjusted and what changes you still need to make. So the area around his nose is cool, almost bluish greys, while his fur is orange. So I'm just blending those areas together, overlapping them where the, the hair starts to fade into the skin of his nose. Throughout this piece, I keep my pencils all very sharp. I like to use long point sharpeners as I find I can go for longer periods without having to re stop and resharpen. I also find sandpaper blocks to be useful as you can use them to create a fine point in your pencil and reduce the number of times you have to fully sharpen it. It helps make your pencils last longer. Just mapping out the shadows under his throat. The colours in this area were actually really rich and deep. They looked a little strange and unusual at first, but once more the drawing was in round about the area, it really came together. With these long hairs in the main, I'm mapping out the shadows created by the clumps first, then building up the colours and gradually adding the finer details. So for this area along the neck with his mane, I actually found it really difficult to follow. Because there was so much long hair, it was really easy to lose my place. To deal with this, I just had to work in small sections at a time, and also section off my reference photo so I could keep my place on there. When faced with areas like this, it can seem overwhelming but just focus on small areas and break it down into manageable chunks. After completing a complicated detailed area of the main, it was also quite good to go back down to the areas of the neck where it was much larger areas of colour and much simpler, just to take a break from all that detail. You can see that the contrast is quite high in this area of the neck. There's a lot of shadows and a lot of rich colours. Don't be afraid of adding contrast to your drawing. Contrast can make a huge difference as to how the drawing pops. On the home stretch for all that detail now. I like working in highly detailed areas. I like seeing them come together, but I have to admit this one was a relief to have all that complicated area done. As before, just mapping out my lights and darks, starting with light layers, lots of gradual layers and building up the colour and building up the shadows. Dark areas quite often take a lot of layers to get as dark as I'd like. I quite often use multiple colours to build up these areas as well. I'm not just using layer after layer of dark brown or black, I'm also layering in reds and oranges in there as well. In cases, I'm also layering in cool greys and purples just to add that little hint of complementary colour to the shadows. Finally, here's the completed drawing. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more, then please do subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter, and you can find me at my website, michellecashmoreart.com. Thanks for watching.